This is a fairly simple and surprisingly neat project to make LED neon style shapes. Let me power these up and you can see them. They're quite attractive. I shall turn the light off, but I won't adjust the exposure because these are a fairly bright source of light. Um, and as you can see, uh, I've got triangles, circles and squares and the material gets laid in and uh, by adjusting the frame size, even though you can only cut this material roughly every inch or 25 millimetres, you can fine tune the sizes to match up so the ends meet up nicely. The light is coming back, watch your eyes. And I shall put the neon out and tuck it out of the way so we can actually concentrate on making it. So I'll put this over here. And the project, uh, if you ever use this stuff, you'll end up with lots of loft cuts. And generally speaking, you can use it in short sections. But I thought it'd be really nice to actually use that by making these frames. And I've got uh, various scripts in the description down below. And that does mean you're going to need a 3D printer. If you don't have a 3D printer, consider this as your inspiration to actually perhaps look at buying one. If you do buy a 3D printer, Ignore all the videos on YouTube that are all geeky and they're saying, oh, you've got to adjust this parameter and that parameter. If you buy a 3D printer, don't worry about stuff like that. Buy it, build it, start using it. And then you can worry about fine tuning things later on. I just see stuff that puts people off. So to make these frames, it's for this uh, typical LED neon flex that operates at 12 volts. And if you see the little dots in the back of this, they're the cutting marks. And you can cut it roughly every inch, 25 millimeters. And inside is a sort of LED strip with uh, clusters of LEDs and then a little gap just so you can actually solder on or cut them. Now, I see uh, a common approach is actually cutting the end and then soldering into the end. I prefer to cut it into the middle and solder into the middle and on the back. It's worth mentioning that some of these strips, uh, they don't have these pads in the back, but the bus bars are still there. And if you get a sharp knife and you gently pare away the material, you can get access to the copper. Another thing worth mentioning when you lay these into the frames is that uh, I tend to do it with the LEDs. If you look down the end of the material, you'll see the LEDs are facing into the material sideways. I prefer to lay it in with those LEDs actually going in the inside bend. The reason for that is if you've got fairly tight bends, like say for instance the squares or triangles, uh, it's just nicer on the LEDs if that radius is as the LEDs pointing out the way. They prefer to bend this way, they're not so good for bending that way. Although in complex re-entrant shapes, they, you can do that, but just uh, for tighter bends, it's actually better on the outside with the LEDs pointing out the way. So here is how you do the project. The script that you use to print these, and there are three of them down below, have just a couple of variables. Let me just zoom down in this. Oh, too much zooming down. Uh, a couple of variables, there are other ones, but the main things you want to change in the script are thick, is the thickness of the LED neon. That's the back bit that's actually going to go into the channel. Let me just grab a pair of calibers here and just show you that the thickness of this stuff is typically about five millimeters for this particular version. And that's why that's set to five. The width, in the case of this one, it's the, the square frame. The width is a... Uh, the actual size from the outside of this. Let me get the calipers again and show you. So roughly 104. And initially when you've uh, printed your frame off, oh, just put that out of the way. Uh, initially when you printed your frame off, oh, I should actually finish what I'm doing here first, shouldn't I? The other variables that you can change if you wish are height. That's actually the depth of the groove in here, the height of the walls. Uh, the wall, which is 1.2 millimeter, that's the wall thickness. I don't recommend going below about 1.2. That's based on three lines at a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, the curve, in the case of the square one, is the outer curve here. Uh, and uh, function 100, that's, uh, it's the number of segments in the circle. It's less critical, although if you make the circular frame, you can actually set that as 6 for a hexagon or 8 for an octagon. But note that the little hole that it puts in for you for the cables to go through, it uh, may not line up uh, if you actually choose that sort of, uh, if, I choo if you choose a like six-sided or eight-sided uh, circle. It'll also have quite uh, sharp bends when it goes around that. It's not got the same curves as have been built into these. Right, okay, zoom back out. Zoom out. So to start off with, you 
Print off your frame and then I'd recommend laying the neon in. It's interesting to note that what I said about the LEDs pointing out the way, if you actually have the LEDs pointing in the way, it changes the flexing of this material enough that it actually makes a difference to where the ends will meet up. Uh, that can have a significant impact. So you might size it for one thing, just lay it in, and if you have the LEDs in the wrong side, it will actually come in a different size. But when you're uh, ready, you, when you've printed off your first frame, sit your surplus LED neon in like this. Just basically work it round into the channel. Oh, if only real neon was this easy. It's very hard to get these days. It used, I, I went through a fad of actual real neon and uh, getting it made by companies uh, was expensive, but it was quite sort of special. It was also very breakable. This is not very breakable. Okay, so I've tweaked the size here. See how this little dot here is uh, coming in almost dead on to the end of that. If you print off other ones, in the case of this one that was 120 millimeter diameter for the outside size, it meant that that overlapped slightly and it was going to be quite hard to actually get it. To, you can't really use too much force to squeeze it in. So I just nudged this one up by just one millimeter and I do recommend writing numbers in the back of these when you're sizing these just to get it absolutely perfect. So uh, let's make this. So I'll show you how we're going to terminate onto it. I like to terminate in the middle as opposed to actually at the ends. I just find it, it gives you access to a much bigger pad. I find it easier in the long run. I used to terminate onto, you know, onto the pads at the end initially, and it makes it a bit more messy because where the ends line up, where you can see here, it's kind of got that, it's mashed up a bit. And it just means the front can sometimes be messed up just where that is, uh, particularly if you're trying to get two ends to butt up close together. So I recommend taking a little notch out. Let me just zoom down this. A little notch out, but be careful when you're cutting through because if you cut through too deeply, you can actually cut into the actual copper and you can damage the bus bars inside. It's not a huge problem because uh, these are very short lengths, so they're not really passing a lot of current. You know, it's not like a huge mega long strip. But when you, the process of doing this, you start off by exposing the pads and this stuff, they need a scrub when you actually do it. You need to get a blade and just scruff the oxidization off uh, like this to gain access to them. Once you've exposed the pads like that, and uh, when you're cutting it down, just cut it so it doesn't quite touch the tape and then slit in from the side and then as you peel, it will actually tear it, much like when you're uh, just ringing around a, a flex to strip it. Once you've done that, put a blob of solder on one side and a blob of solder on the other side. In this stuff, it's positive at the front next to the uh, the output surface and it's negative at the back. Not the same with all tapes. Some of them are, are different. Once you've done that, uh, then get your wires and don't have too much spare copper, just a little bit at the end exposed and solder on so you can run the wires out and it lays flat with the uh, LED neon material so it doesn't actually make it a tight fit into the case. So I shall show you that right now. I shall terminate one and solder onto it. I'll just set the soldering on and I'll be back in a moment. One moment, please. Okay, and we're ready. I've lifted this up uh, to get it closer to the camera. Nice black background. Now, I'm going to cut a little uh, window out of here just to actually access those copper pads. You could theoretically do it anywhere just by scraping the insulation off the bus bars, but I don't recommend doing it in between these pads, these dots here, because... Uh, that will potentially be in the areas with the LEDs on the other side, and you could effectively desold them. So I'm going to start by making a little slot up here, and this is all down to practice. Once you've done this a few times, it will all make sense. So I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm just, well, I hope not anyway. Uh, I'm just cutting through into the plastic, and I shall cut a little slot here as well. I'm trying to see where I am. So I cut it roughly in the right place. Once you've done that, get a pair of long nose pliers, well long nose pliers, side cutters would be better, uh, get the correct tool clive, and you should be able to just peel this up and uh, expose the connections underneath. As I say, it's all down to trial and error. Let's uh, leave a little bit more space there. As I say, trial and error. I'm just going to open that up a little bit more because I want more room in there. 
the more room the better but you don't want to go too close to the top where it actually goes near the stuff and we'll also go down like this wow i'm messing this up big time haven't i yes that's fine i have no problem with that okay right i'm just going to grab the soldier iron now okay now i've actually been able to turn the soldier iron on before actually soldering these i'm going to do what i mentioned and i'm going to just take the blade here and i'm just going to scrape the surface off these pads because uh they are kind of oxidized i presume it's part of the plastic uh, molding process that has a slight oxidizing surface on these uh copper pads and you want them fairly clean because uh the soldier will take better some of these they print the black line right across the pad as well that is not helpful when they do that right i think the solder iron is up to temperature I shall melt some solder onto it, a nice clean shiny tip here, and I shall put a blob over here, making sure not to melt the front of the plastic. This is where you find out if you've not cleaned it enough because the, the solder will not take if it's uh, tarnished too much. There's one little blob, and here is another little blob, but I've put it at the other side so that the wires aren't going to like cross. Now, I'm going to uh, tin the wires that I've prearranged here. So just a couple of bits of wire, one end stripped long, but the other end just barely stripped about less than eighth of an inch, just a couple of millimetres here, just because I don't want too much copper in here. And the positive is going to go to the top, so and the negative to the bottom, so I'm just going to flow some solder onto these, noting that uh, if you pause too long, the plastic of the cable will sh shrink back a bit. And then I'm going to start with black at the front, like this, and just flow that on and let it cool down before I take my fingers away. It's, I'm notorious for trying to do this too quickly and then the, uh, the solder isn't fully sad and then the wire pops right back off again that's impatience for you and now i'm going to solder the positive wire at the top bus bar and by soldering the bottom one first you're not actually uh, soldering the vicinity of a cable that's already there so this is ready to test uh, i'm just going to test it i'm going to get my power supply here i'm going to hook it onto these two leads and we'll see if our strip is going to illuminate. Yes, it is. There is our neon stripe. Okay, now it's time to put it into the frame. I'll just uh, z uh, get this stuff out of the way and then we can do that. So I'm going to start by threading the wires through this. And then I'm going to look at the location of the LED neon the leds inside which are facing this way so i'm going to put it in with them in the inside of the circle and i'm going to sit that in carefully line it up the hole that my script conveniently places in for you it may be a little hard to put this in because you've got a uh, possibly bulgy wires if you've put quite big cables in uh, and also, it can actually make the plastic just sort of like bow out in that area. Now I'm going to dress the rest of this in. I'm going to bring it round, and uh, this should be almost a perfect fit, but I've got the option of just lifting this out and trimming it if needs be. As it is, I do notice it's at a slight angle, but we'll see how it looks when the other end is butted up to it. I can always square that off. So now I'm going to bring this bit round. These wires are getting right in the way now because it's the end of the drum. So the, when you get to the end of the drum, the wires tend to be called quite tightly around it. It just makes them a bit slinky-ish. So let's put this in and it's going to cut on this line here. I think it's going to be okay. With real neon, uh, you would tend to have a little gap between the ends anyway because they can't butt the tubes too hard up to together especially for using high frequency supplies it causes issues now what can i do here right i'm going to have to take it off short momentarily but what i'm going to do i'm going to put this sharp blade i'm going to place it on a hard surface and at the edge of the table and then i'm going to actually chop cleanly down on that mark so i'm going to just take that off camera momentarily while i do that and 
chop it like that. Then I'm going to lay it in, butt it up to there. Yeah, see, I could have actually done a better job of that, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter. Once it's lit, it doesn't really show. And uh, just to make sure this is all sat down nicely, I'm going to press it like that. Then I'm going to get the power supply, hook the leads up, and that should be our big pink ring. It is. We now have a big pink ring. How lovely. What an appropriate choice of colour. That's quite nice, isn't it? I didn't notice I had the exposure off there. I hope that wasn't yo-yoing up and down. That is very nice, isn't it? It's got a real sort of neonate look to it. Uh, and this operates at 12 volts. I actually will. I recommend. The light's coming back. Watch your eyes. Uh, I recommend operate it at slightly lower than that. Uh, it will usually operate down to about 9 volts. Uh, but operating at, say... 10 volts, or even just putting one or two diodes in series, the 12 volt supply, will actually make this run at lower power, and it just means it lasts longer, it, that it puts less stress in the LEDs. Not that they're usually too stressed in these. And what can I do with this bit? Uh, you, what you can do with these bits, you can actually, if you've got the patience, you can actually term lots of set, terminate lots of sets, you can have multicolour circles or shapes. But that's it. So uh, circles, triangles, squares, take your pick. Uh, tweak to Get it the size that's just perfect for the material you've got, and then basically just terminate it and sit it in. I think this is a good project. I do like it a lot. Uh, but there we go. I'm just going to make the rest of this light up. I think that would be a good uh, finale. It is a good finale. Oh, that is so bright. It's really nice. Uh, statistics. The pink ring we've just made, uh, at 10 volts, it runs at 120 milliamps. That's about 1.2 watts, which is a very good intensity for indoor use. At the full 12 volts, it runs at 240 milliamps, which is considerably more, and uh, that can get a bit sort of glary and fierce. Um, so you can just choose that, just nudge the voltage to whatever, whatever pleases you. But there we go. How to use up all those scrap bits of LED neon flex and make some nice ornamentation for your home and workshop.